by Stephen Berg of that center joins us live now from New York. Thanks for being with us. Uh, and so Shatari was named by your organization as one of its most wanted suspects last year. Tell us a little bit more about why you pursued him and why you wanted to bring him to the attention of Hungarian officials. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for, for having me on tonight. Good evening. Uh, you know, we thought uh, that this is an important case. This is the person that, that oversaw uh, the deportation of over 15,000 Jews. Uh, but it wasn't just a deportation. This is a person that would prowl around uh, with a dog whip and beat people. This is a person uh, that was sadistic. This is a person um, that really almost relished uh, in this job. Uh, and we thought it was uh, really important. And, and he was convicted and fled. Uh, hungry all those years ago, hid in Canada, um, and then fled again. And we thought that this is a really important case uh, to be brought forward and for the world to basically say that everything he had done was inappropriate and justice needs to be done. And what are your concerns surrounding legal proceedings? Last year, for example, a Hungarian court found another suspect, Sando Capiro, not guilty of crimes against Jews and Serbs committed in, in 1942. And I guess that really sort of shows how difficult it can be to establish the role of some of these sure. figures uh, in, a, in a court of law years after such atrocious crimes took place. Do you fear the same thing could happen this time around? Well, you know, Simon Wiesenthal always said it was never about revenge, it was always about justice. And, and our job uh, is to work with the local governments, is to try and find who these, these people are, identify them, and then, you know, let the local authorities take over. And that's the system of law that we believe in. Uh, but yeah, because of the time that goes, uh, that's, that's gone by, a lot of these cases are extremely difficult. Uh, but for us, it's really important. Uh, we owe it to the victims and we owe it to, to our children to, to say that this is not okay. Uh, and even if someone ran around the globe, you know, we're going to try and bring the justice. And even if, again, in the end, he's not convicted or, or whatever happens, you know, we've done our part. And Shatari managed to evade the authorities for, for a very long time, for years, in fact, didn't he? He was living in Canada for decades, working as an art dealer. He then moved on to Budapest. How do, do suspects like him manage to, to live under the radar for that length of time? You know, after World War II, uh, the Nuremberg trials were quite famous and, and really important, but once the trials were over, um, the Americans went home, Europeans were rebuilding, uh, and many, many uh, people that had per perpetrated these crimes, they just kind of blended into the woodwork, um, and they made sure not to get speeding tickets, and they made sure not to call any attention, um, and then they went on for a long time. And I think it really was when Simon Wiesenthal uh, helped capture Adolf Eichmann that this kind of came to four and I think governments um, over the last you know 20 30 years have taken it more seriously um, and then these cases pop up just you know uh, we actually have something called operation last chance uh, where we're um, trying to get details on uh, you know because this really is the last chance uh, and sometimes you have people coming forward just guilty consciences saying you know look I know about this person I need to let you know what's going on well Rabbi Steven Berg of the Simon Wiesenthal Center thank you for sharing your thoughts with us